I mean, for example, one of the things I wrestled with when I was doing my documentary was, do I tell the story of alleged crash retrievals? And I agonized about it. To be honest, I was really nervous about it because even though I had the former director of science and technology development from the US Navy, no less, Nat Kovitz, on the record telling me that he was briefed into an alleged program which allegedly involved the retrieval of multiple non-human craft. Let me ask you, in the recent uh, bill that's uh, come to light in the US, the NDAA bill, um, a few things are specified. Amongst them are biological effects, working with allies, and a suggestion of not necessarily recovered crashed technology, but discovered technology. Now, we have heard hints and stories of possible discoveries made during archaeological digs. They tend to focus on areas around Crete or in the Middle East as locations for those discoveries. Have you heard anything that would back up those sorts of claims? Um, I haven't heard it for Crete or Greece, but yes, I have heard that a craft was recovered uh, from the Indian subcontinent. That's what I was told by somebody with a smirk from the intelligence community. And uh, I was told that it was taken as part of Operation Moondust to the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And, uh, you know, bottom line is, I don't know if it's true or not, but I was gobsmacked to go through the CIA's library. And if you go into their online archive, and I've got the links to this in my book, you will find a document, in, fe in fact, multiple documents that refer to Operation Moondust tracing and attempting to recover a flying saucer that's the word they use a craft that has been discovered in i think in one case in nepal and in another case in a province of afghanistan and uh, just today i was having a conversation with an indian ufo researcher who uh, uh, was filling me in on what he knows about that incident and you know, frankly, the only reason that CIA archive has been declassified is because when Bill Clinton was the president, John Podesta made it very, very clear that as a senior policy advisor to the president, he thought the US government should be being more transparent about what it knows about the phenomenon. And I think he was persuaded to the notion that there has been an official reluctance to release all that the US knows. And so it was under the Clinton administration that most of those CIA files were declassified in a huge swag. And what blew me away is whilst they've been reported before I looked at them, I actually read the, the first time I looked at the one that talked about the craft in Afghanistan, I looked at it about 10 times thinking, is this, is this a fake? You know, is this like an MJ-12 document that's been planted in a file or something else. And, and it just gobsmacked me that here in the CIA's archives, there was a document that asserted a craft retrieval, or at least an attempted craft retrieval. And when I spoke to, as journalists do, my anonymous sources in different sections of the US defense and intelligence community, I was amazed. I expected it to be quite difficult to get people to talk to me about this. But once people knew that they were speaking to me confidentially, and once they knew that I'd gone to enormous efforts to protect their identity by not using electronic means to communicate with them that could readily be bugged or tracked, they opened up. And I was told, and I, I, I'm cautious in saying this because people will immediately assume that I'm saying it's true. I don't know it's true because there's always the risk of a disinformation program. There's always the risk that what this is is another Richard Doty plant trying to mislead a journalist, as has happened countless times before. But I was told that, yes, there is a program. There is an active, ongoing program where the US government has recovered craft. And indeed, one of the things I worked through was the historical documents of Wilbert Smith, the Canadian researcher, and his communications with a guy called Robert Sabacha, who was on the Scientific Advisory Committee for the Manhattan Project, and then allegedly later on worked for this secret group that was essentially trying to back engineer craft that had been recovered. And he told 
researchers that he didn't understand why this was being kept confidential, but he acknowledged its reality. Now, there comes a time where, as a journalist, you go through different levels of proof. And okay, there's an allegation. So prima facie, there's an allegation, say that X murdered Y. Then you get to a kind of a civil level where you think, you know, beyond a balance of probabilities, on a balance of probabilities, it's probably the case that X murdered Y. And then you get to a criminal burden where you think beyond reasonable doubt, X murdered Y. Well, I'm on the I'm on the civil burden at the moment. I think it's on the balance of probabilities more likely than not that the United States government is lying through its teeth when it says that it hasn't recovered E.T. Craft. And it's really interesting because the only president that has ever said that is Barack Obama. And they did it under enormous pressure. If you remember, there was a petition which was put to the White House. And I think the president's office, in order to get the media off their back, referred it to the scientific advisor for the president. And probably without the authorization or the supervision too closely of the president, a press release was put out by the science advisor, which basically asserted definitively that as far as the White House was aware, there is no evidence of extraterrestrial visitations to the planet Earth, and there's certainly no evidence, I think, of recoveries of alien spacecraft. So it poo-pooed the whole Roswell story as a myth, and an untrue myth at that. I'm not so sure anymore, and I think we should be asking that question. And for me as a journalist, that was a huge turning point. And, and the best way I can express this is to say that journalists always have 10 times as many sources for the sources that they quote publicly. And so I'm making no secret of the fact that when Nat Kovitz went on the record with me and said, yes, you can quote me, I was briefed into a UFO retrieval program. He introduced me to people. He put me on to people that he knew inside the defense, science, military infrastructure. And those people spoke to me because Nat recommended that I do. And they've trusted me with their information. And I think there's something to it. I don't know for sure. Are you asking me, is there a, is there a TR3B or whatever it is, jacked up on blocks in a cave somewhere in Area 51? I don't bloody know, but I strongly suspect there is. Now, listen, you talked about stigma, and one of the arguments people will always use in this conversation about UFOs is if these craft are so technologically superior as they would appear to be, how can they how can they crash? So in your findings and your research, have you forged any opinion as to why they may one crash or two be left here? Well, you're using the word crash, and I guess I did use the word crash with the Aztec incident, but I'm not persuaded that they're all crashes. Edgar Mitchell, and this is something I'm telling you for the first time, Edgar Mitchell told my source, the spaceman, who was one of his closest friends, that he understood that a fully functioning craft was found literally with the lights on and the door open and the US military recovered it off the Mexican military under gunpoint and took it back to the United States off Mexican soil. And that was a story that Edgar Mitchell told my friend, the spaceman. Now, I don't know if it's true or not, but I don't think Edgar Mitchell had lost his marbles even by his late time in life. And he was utterly convinced that there had been multiple craft retrievals. He told this to his friend, and indeed he told it to multiple friends. So when you have the, one of the most respected astronauts, one of the greatest American heroes of recent times, defying the United States government and accusing the US government of a cover-up, of a conspiracy to conceal information, but it's quite obvious to me that the United States Air Force is lying through its teeth. and. One of the things that's been emphasized to me by multiple sources is craft were found archaeologically. They were found in apparent crash incidents. And more importantly, they were also found as if they'd been left on purpose 
for us to find.